Don't let your memes be dreams, because who doesn't want it? 200 amps of ducted RC plane motor powering your flying gantry. That and more in today's video from Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Fest 2024, sponsored by LDO Motors. For printer parts, kits, accessories, and more, check them out at the link in the description. Hello, we are here at Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Fest. I've got V here from Armchair Engineering, and today happens to be April 20th, and that has absolutely nothing to do with these totally reasonable, extremely practical yes. printers we're about to talk about. Yep. So B, what is a real flying gantry like? Well, you see, it's simply hard to describe. You kind of have to show you. This is what a real flying gantry is. Four kilograms of thrust, 2,400 watts of 12 volt, encoders on the Z, and no detent torque. <laughs> so that just slammed right down on the nozzle. Yeah, like. it, it, uh, it, it's offset just slightly. Oh, just, okay. It, it, the, the, it barely touched it. It's it fine. barely touches, okay. So this is a real flying gantry. You this have is a true fly, the only. Quad, quadcopter motors essentially yep. making this fly. There, there is no belts holding it up. There's no steppers. There's fishing line just for the encoders uh, to provide positional feedback. Okay, so that's how you're keeping the, uh, the PID loop or whatever to yeah, actually Yeah, that's hold. the feedback, exactly. Okay, yep. so those are just encoders. And what else is on this machine? So other so, other than the flying gantry, what are we looking at? Yeah, here? so this uh, this was is a Micron 180. There's not a single part uh, from the Micron 180 CAD at this point. Um, it is all-wheel drive NEMA 14 pancake like extruder motors, like what you'd see on the the double folded ascender or something like that, um, for even weight distribution. Because if you did rear, just rear wheel drive, like a typical 2.4 gantry, it would be it would typically you need separate uh, tuning in the back, and I didn't want to do that. Um, it is simply, I don't know, it's it's the one true flying gantry printer. I don't know what else to say about it. It is, <laughs> it's running archetype uh, Blackbird with 100% necessary part cooling fans because we don't really have any, yeah, there's no air moving around in this printer. Um, and so the part cooling fans really make it work. <laughs> um, if we didn't have those, the whole thing would be moot. Now, it, it, I know it seems like a joke, you know, flying it. It does actually print though. It does actually it does print. does actually print. Here, let's, uh, let's hover it at the very least. Cover your ears. That is so. <laughs> and surprisingly, it actually can print like that. So um, what layer height are we looking at here? One mil, this is a 1.8 CHT because I don't know that we'd be able to print anything else. Right, so one mil layer height, it, it does really print. The it, defect in that print was because I manually lifted the gantry up to prove to somebody that it was not cheating. This. <laughs> the layer stacking is a lot better than you'd see on, on uh, I've seen worse, I guess. Oh yeah, I'd say. Oh, I've seen much worse, believe yeah. me. This is just insane. This is just now. This is not a kit. This is just a complete. Oh no! I'll yeah. probably put the cat on GitHub or something. It's a terrible <laughs> idea. No one should build one. Uh, you need two HP like 1200 watt server power supplies to run it properly. Oh geez. Uh, I'm mean, running what's the amp draw on those motors. So 50 amps each oh, at 12 volt. Uh, we have so these HP power supplies run 900 watts at 110 uh, and at 220 put out 1200 watts. So we're plugged into the 220 line here. Uh, so we have 2400 watts of. 12 volt available and we're using every every inch of it um actually on if you're on 110 with only 1800 watts it'll you'll brown out the power supplies if you try to go too hard um so we have to really gently limit the throttle to like it can only run between 0.5 throttle and like 0.87 throttle otherwise it'll crash it'll just crash so but on 2400 watts we got the whole we got the whole shebang awesome um, now moving on to something a little more useful yeah now this right here actually looks somewhat practical somewhat I'm, I'm putting a, a it's, it's practical. This is the printer. So, so what are we got here? This is Angel. This is Angel, uh, serial number 255. Wait a minute, 255. Yeah, the countdown. Oh, if, okay. we, if we hit zero, we'll figure it out then. You know. Okay. Uh, as one does, right? Yep. So, Angel is the primary parts of Angel are is about 70. 
75 pounds of 1045 steel. Um, the primary halo here is 20 mil thick. The bed is machined from the inside, like from the leftovers of the cutout um, on the plate and is 17 mil thick. This lower bed plate, I don't remember the thickness, uh, is also 1045 steel, Liam's painted it. Um, the Z is 25 millimeter diameter uh, linear rods. This printer, I think the final build weight right now, this is before the enclosure um, and the tempered glass panels is around 125 pounds. Um, we're doing eight motor drive, cross XY. Um, of course we have a tube on it, we have beacon because you know, you gotta go fancy. Um, C is that a CPAP? That is a, that is uh, a scroll compressor. An oil is scroll compressor. Typically you see scroll compressors used in uh, AC units with refrigerant to help seal the, the scroll system. Yeah. And this is, the tolerances are so tight on the two scrolls that it compresses air with an oscillation with just metal to metal. It is like, that's, it's insane. That's it is, insane. So this will put out, I think around 1.3 bar. Um, I don't remember the airflow off the top, maybe point, like half a, 0.7 liters per minute. It's, CFM it's, was low. But the, the CFM was low, but because okay. the velocity is so high coming out of the nozzle, it's in training ambient air to actually do like a lot of cooling. So how come you went with that over like a traditional CPAP? It's quiet. It's like 35 dBA. Oh, um, turn it on. It's... When Moon right here decides to cooperate, I can turn right. it on. I can, I probably have it over here. So that is, I mean... That's it's full blast. It's, it's oh. full blast. The air coming out of the nozzle is louder than the actual oscillation. So it makes up, the quietness of this makes up for that. Yeah, exactly. We have a very, we, really quiet air and really loud air, you know? <laughs> um, so, and then we, and we also have two, are these 120? 120, 32. 120-32 fans doing cross, uh, doing sheet Current cooling. Current air cooling? Um, yeah, that's, so we have basically really high velocity air right at the nozzle and then just a lot of air blowing across the bed. So yep. cooling capacity is like potentially really good. We haven't spent a whole ton of time actually printing with this yet because uh, when did you do the first print on this? Like two weeks ago? Not even. <laughs> Not even two weeks ago. And then there was also a ton of debugging that came after. A ton of debugging. Got to be, oh yeah, I bet. Yeah, the manifold for the air here is, an, is SLM'd and so the air comes in here but comes out over here. So this is like an SLM'd air manifold that's O-ringed against a laser cut part. Okay. And if you, I don't know if you, you can probably get a top down view of this, of this um, tool head. It is really, uh, really compact. Uh, let's go this way. Yeah. Like Actually, for a right. cross XY tool head, it is tiny. I was like, hey, let's package a small cross XY tool head and then like died inside while we were doing it because like it is just so tight. But uh, we have a two, 220 millimeter cube build volume in. I don't know, maybe 500, 600 mil, like yeah, it's physical. So it's it's pretty it's pretty space efficient. Cool. Uh, oh, and the last, sorry, the last bit. Uh, we haven't gotten proper input shaper results off of it, but the primary resonant frequency right now is somewhere around 140 hertz, which is uh, input shaper is giving us a 60,000 recommended acceleration with the MZV shaper at so zero percent vibration. You can send it with. You this. can send it. Yeah. Awesome. Um, this is this is the printer designed to send it. Really is. <laughs> oh, and 12 mil belts too, because why not? Yeah, why not? Yep. Wait, 12 mil? 12 mil. Oh, jeez. 12 mil belts. Yeah. Uh, at two x spec tension. So like this is a lot. Like. It's, it's a lot of belt tension. Um, so we have double shear because otherwise we would just blow up the bearings on. Oh, that's hot. Sorry, I'm so sorry. Um, 2.8 amps is what we're running these motors at. They're really oh, hot. Oh geez, yeah. I can see the heat sink. You may, you may need to actually actively Yeah, cool these. we're thinking about it. Oh. We thought it would maybe sink some into the, the plate, but the standoffs don't. It does. It, it, it does, yeah, the plate is, oh, the plate's hot. Yeah, that's Angel. Yeah. Uh, so kits will be available in the next couple of years, maybe. <laughs> um, we're not sure on pricing, we're aiming for like, I don't know. That's amazing. 20. Uh, uh, kits will be available in one DFH year. In well, one DFH year, which One is, DFH year kits. <laughs> you know, maybe like a dog year potentially. Um, one day. Maybe not today, maybe not one tomorrow, day. but one day. I, I'm not even gonna say soon TM, I'm gonna say like not soon TM. Um, <laughs> hey, set res reasonable expectations. Of course. Yeah, the, okay. uh, Logistics of shipping 125 pounds of printer to the end user is uh, yeah. one we have yet to solve. Awesome. So that is uh, Angel, along with the uh, the Flycron from Armchair Engineering, and uh, so yeah, they they exist. Check the GitHub page, I guess. Right. Oh, join our Discord. He'll join the, the Discord. He'll put the link in his video. Yeah, join the Discord, I guess, and uh, link below. Leave your sanity at the door. Yeah.